Hi, this is Brian Wicklin with Garfinkel Schwartz. I'm here in Maitland, Florida today in our office here. We also have an office in Cocoa Beach, Florida, which is on the Space Coast. But our practice, and especially including the Defense Base Act, um, takes me all across the country and pretty much all across the world. Um, what I'd like to do is talk to you very practically about insurance companies under the Defense Base Act. There are only a few of them that kind of monopolize the market. Um, I don't like insurance companies because I used to I used to be in-house counsel for an insurance company for a period of time. For a long for a long period of time I was outside counsel for insurance companies. I know exactly how they work, especially how they work under this law, which is really, really bad. Um, it, I've had clients say that they didn't get an attorney until they called me because the nurse case manager said that she was going to take care of everything or the adjuster said, hey, once you get back home, you'll, 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 be, you'll be treated like a king, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the thing you should be aware of, just briefly, practically speaking, is that every time an insurance company does something, they're doing something to try to minimize your claim. What I mean by that is if they ask for a recorded statement, why would they need a recorded statement from you? They already know what happened. They know that you're injured at work. They want to try to find something that they, they can use against you in the future. It's the only reason they would want a recorded statement from you. They have witnesses. They have the company knows what happened to you, what the injury was. They don't need that. They don't need that. Number two, why would they send you to an independent medical exam of a doctor of their choosing? Now, th wouldn't that mean that they're trying to figure out a way to not rely on your treating physician who's telling you that you need these things? That's probably the only, that's the only purpose for sending you to an independent medical examination is to try to get away with not having to, not having to pay for your medical care. Third thing, they do a vocational assessment. What is a vocational assessment? Well, if someone interviews you about all of your qualifications, uh, and all, all the things that you could possibly do um, physically, even though you're, you could be partially or pretty much permanently disabled. Are they doing this vocational assessment to try to find jobs for you to help you get back on your feet? No. They're trying to find jobs that they think they can qualify you to do to send those jobs and, and the qualifications and the physical requirements to their independent medical examiner or peer review person um, to sign off and say, yeah, we can probably prove to a judge that he, can, that he or she can do these jobs. Well, that obviously will reduce the benefits that they have to pay you, and that's the only reason they do it. They don't do it for your benefit. Um, after the vocational assessment, there's what's done, a, a labor market survey is done on you, and that, that they try to search for and find jobs um, that pay a, a enough money that will affect your bottom line as to what your compensation rate should be for the future. Another two things the insurance companies try to do to minimize your claim or get away with not paying you are, number one, is what they want, they want you to go to a functional capacity evaluation. They're looking for exaggeration. They're looking for any type of thing that they can think of to say you're not trying your best um, doing these exercises and doing these different bending and, and, and lifting things um, that you may or may not be able to do. And they only simply do that functional capacity evaluation to try to get you back into the workforce um, under their terms and not under your or your doctor's terms. So be aware of the functional capacity evaluation as well. Finally, a lot of times if the case is relatively serious and it looks like long-term care is going to be needed, including possible surgery, um, it's not unlike, it's not, it's not uncommon for the insurance company to do surveillance on you. And that's just another one of the tools that they have in our arsenal to try to get you trapped up and, and to explaining during, um, you know, maybe an initial um, written statement or oral statement they ask you for. Uh, maybe at your deposition, if you're not represented, um, they're going to try to twist your words and say, oh, well, you acted like you couldn't do anything, and we saw you in your yard cutting your grass, picking up your kids, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then they'll, they'll try to say that you're untrustworthy to the judge. So those are all the things the insurance companies do to people, regardless of you individually, because you're just simply a number to them, and they want to try to minimize the number they're going to have to pay you. So that's all I do for a living. I fight for the true value of the claims. Um, for people that I represent and it's a tough battle, but it's one definitely worth pursuing. Like I said, sometimes they act like they're trying to help you out and doing all these things. There's absolutely no reason why they would do any of these things other than to try to minimize what they have to pay you. And so anytime you start to feel a little uncomfortable uh, about, about these things that they're trying to have you do, um, that's the time you got to call an attorney. If you don't call me, please call somebody else that specializes in the Defense Base Act because it's complicated. They have giant resources and a whole industry on their side playing, playing these games to try to reduce or completely cut off your benefits. 
So again, I'm Brian Wicklin with Garfinkel Schwartz. I'll come to you. Um, call me anytime, 24 hours a day. Check out my website at www.defensebaseactlaw.com. Brian Wicklin again, signing out. Thanks for listening and mate in Florida.